Hi everyone, Dr. Matt here, and in this video, we're gonna cover the topic tissue repair. In this video, we're gonna cover three main things. Firstly, we'll look at what the body does immediately after injury to try to repair itself, to regenerate itself, to fix itself. Number two, we're gonna focus on wound healing at the skin, and essentially, how it repairs itself by first intention and second intention healing. And then finally, we'll come across and look at what factors slow down or decrease the speed or decrease the quality of wound healing. All right, so let's start off generally with what the body does after injury. So we've all been injured before. We could have lacerations of our skin. We could have puncture wounds. We may have burns. We may have surgical interventions. So these things are going to be disruptive to the body. And the body really wants to be able to bring it back to its original state and its original function. So there's two ways that the body, or the two main things that the body employs to try to repair tissue. Now these are Repair by regeneration, so regeneration, or number two, scar, I'll just, I'll just say scarring. So they're the two main things that the body will do in response to an injury. Regeneration means that the cells that have been injured will regenerate or go back to how they were before the injury. Now, what determines this, well actually what would determine either the, these one or two things after injury will be how extensive the injury is. So if it's a really severe injury, it's probably more likely just to go down a scar tissue way where there's gonna be a laying down of a lot of tissue to try to reinstall the architecture. But if the injury is less severe, we hopefully will go down the regeneration pathway where the original cells just go back to how they were before. But another factor that determines which one of these are chosen is the tissue that is damaged. Now in the body, there are three types of tissue. So I'll write these down. One, two, three. The first type of tissue is what we call labile tissue. Labile tissue are cells so that's tissue made of cells that have the capacity to regenerate really well. So they generally have stem cells associated with it. So this would be found on the skin, in the mucosal area, so your mouth, your nose, your respiratory tract, your gastrointestinal tract, your urinary tract, your reproductive tract. So those cells, when you get injured, injury to that, they have a real good capacity to replicate copy themselves and go back to their original state. So that's more likely to be employed as a regenerative form of repair. The second type is what we call stable. Stable cell population. So these are generally hibernating. So they're turned off, they're not mitotically active. They're kind of just in a sleeping stage. And this, a lot of the organs of the body are in, in this kind of category. When the organs do get injured, they do have a capacity to go back to more like labile cells and they can regenerate if the injury is not too bad. A good example of stable cells would be the liver. If you injured the liver, cut out a piece of the liver, if the liver was to become damaged, uh, it does have the potential to go from a sleeping stage into a labile stage and it can copy itself and replicate itself and go back to its original state. So some organs do have the stable possibility. But the last one is permanent. These mean, these are tissues that can't, they're permanently turned off. So these would be things like neurons and certain types of muscles, like a cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscles do have a little bit of possibility to um, copy or repair itself, but generally, uh, if, if the injury is significant, skeletal muscle won't be able to regenerate. It will require scarring. So usually with this type of tissue, so this would be a brain injury, uh, injury, injury to the heart, it won't have the capacity to regenerate and therefore it relies more on scarring. Whereas the labile cells like the epithelium, they are much more likely to be able to go into the regenerative stage and go back to its original state and function. So that's the first principle to get across. Now what we're gonna to go to is focus on skin. So these two pictures we've got here is to illustrate the difference between skin wound healing, which is done by first intention healing and second intention healing. So what we've got is the top layer of the skin, which we can see from the top, that's the epithelium, with the bottom layer of the epithelium being the basal cells. In here, we've got the dermis, illustrated here by a blood vessel, and then below that, we've got the hypodermis, which is fat. 
And the same thing is over here. So I want to illustrate that these tissues are the same, but the injury is going to dictate whether it's a first or a second intention injury. So first intention wound healing is generally things with minimal injury, minimal injury. That means also minimal inflammation. And this would be injuries like lacerations, surgical incisions, puncture wounds. So there's not a huge amount of tissue disruption, not a huge amount of tissue loss and very minimal inflammation. So let's give an example, or I'll show it here. We've got, let's say a laceration where, I'll get my duster. We've got a laceration come through, damages the tissue all the way down into the dermis. So it's a fairly big injury. So we've come through with a knife or a scalpel and we've caused damage. The first thing will happen is blood will start to accumulate in that injured area. So we start to have a blood coagulation clot come out and fill that area of injury. So the first step that we're gonna see, so step one is blood clot, blood clot. Blood clot will happen in the first 24 hours. So I'll just put less than 24 hours. So what the blood clot will do, so we have blood leaking out into the area, platelets will start to aggregate. That will be, uh, fibrin will then get cross-linked and the, the coagulation process will start to solidify that clot and the clot becomes a more uh, stable um, bit of tissue. Now the function of this is to seal off the wound. So it seals it off, stops any further bleeding, hopefully protects the area for getting invaded with bacteria or other microorganisms. But it will start to release growth factors, so cytokines and other growth factors that will encourage cells to come out of the blood to come into that area. So it will start the next process, which is going to be inflammation off. It also will lay, lay the groundwork um, or the foundation for cells to grow into. But this will generally take about 24 hours, this blood clot phase. Then we move into clot, uh, to step two, which is a combination of inflammation and granulation. Granulation. So what's happening here is inflammation. So we're going to get um, vasodilation, so more blood flow to the area. We're going to get exudate, so fluid will come out of it. It's going to take um, immune cells into the area. So we'll start to see neutrophils interspersing through that blood clot. So the neutrophils is the first white blood cell onto the scene. Neutrophils in this part of their function is going to work as phagocytosis. So they're going to clean up the debris, remove bacteria, anything that shouldn't be there, dead cells, anything that's going to hamper that healing process. So that's the inflammatory process. This is going to happen over the next few days, playing an important role for that cleanup. The basal cells at the bottom of this epithelial layer, they will start to grow across here like so and seal it off. So that's epithelialization. That's important, that's going to be a regenerative state. And what that's going to do is, just like we do with normal skin, these are your stem cells, they make new cells and they just migrate upwards. So this is going to take place over days. This area is going to turn into a scab and slowly disappear as the cells move upwards. So that will take place. But down here we're going to have what we call granulated tissue. And what's going to happen here, that blood clot is going to slowly disappear, new blood cells to a small degree will grow into it, that is called angiogenesis. So new blood cells will grow into it. Um, the neutrophils will get replaced by macrophages. So macrophages are coming from monocytes, a different white blood cell. M macrophages will do a lot more eating up of that area to clean it up. Fibroblasts will grow into it. Fibroblasts are a type of connective tissue and they will grow into this area to lay down extracellular matrix. So that's the kind of foundation. Um, blood vessels grow into it. And this is what we call granulating tissue, which is a jelly-like fibril, fibril tissue, which is delicate, but it's in the important platform to allow that healing to take place. And so this, this process, inflammation and granulation, will take uh, one day to, let's say, a week to take place or to complete. So that's really a combination of inflammation and granulation in that second stage. The third stage is scar tissue and remodeling.
So what's happening here is that those fibroblasts, which we spoke about earlier, they will start to lay down collagen, specifically type one collagen, which is all about strength, holding that together. So the scarring will give the, the wound strength. At this stage, this is probably completely healed, but the dermis needs that additional support to keep the wound together. The collagen will do that. And as the collagen has been laid down over time, so we're talking weeks now, slowly these will be remodeled away, taken away. And then after a couple of months, this, this healing process has really gone back to its original state and the outcome is very good. So that's first intention. Remember, there's a middle in, minimal injury, minimal inflammation, injuries like incisions, laceration, puncture wounds. Now, when we compare it over here to secondary intention, so secondary intention is a lot more severe. So severe injury, a lot more inflammation, and a lot more tissue has been impacted. So we can see a huge amount, this is a terrible eraser. So we've got a huge amount more tissue loss. This could be through abrasions, it could be through burns, it could be through just significant more injury. So we've really taken a huge amount of the top layer of the skin away with the dermis. We've injured the blood vessel. So as you could imagine, we got a huge blood clot. So the blood clot compared to over here is a lot larger. So in comparison to the steps here, probably very similar. The blood clot, fibrin clot is going to be still happening from the immediate injury out to 24 hours, one day. So that part doesn't change so much. But what does change is this next stage. This next stage is going to be significantly drawn out. So we will have inflammation, but the inflammation will take a lot longer to cease. So that in acute inflammation that we saw over here, which could be kind of finished within a few days, this is probably going to go out to weeks. Because the neutrophils have a lot more tissue to clean up, it has to protect itself from um, outside insults from bacteria or microorganisms, and it's going to take a lot longer for the epithelization to come across, which will happen, but this will take a lot longer because it's got a lot further to migrate across. So the inflammation will be drawn out. There'll be more exudate, there'll be more swelling, there'll be more likelihood of infection. So because the inflammation is taking longer, it's gonna take longer for the granulating tissue to begin. But in any case, the first stages of the granulation is gonna be a little bit different to the first intention. In the first intention, we saw the fibroblasts that are laying down collagen one, but in this case, it's gonna be laying down more looser connective tissue. So this would be collagen two. So providing kind of a looser network. And the reason for why it does that is because you need to bring a lot more blood vessels. So angiogenesis has to bring a lot more blood into that area because there's a lot more healing to take place. To, to heal, you need a lot more blood, a lot more nutrients, a lot more white blood cells. So this is going to be a lot longer process, that granulation process, because you need to produce a lot more new blood vessels and lay down a different type of connected tissue. So we're probably going to see more of the scarring phase than the regeneration. There will be regeneration because you do have that epithelium and the basal layer, layer of, the epithelium, of, the, of the epidermis, should I say, but scarring will be more prominent in comparison to the first intention. Once the granulation tissue has resolved, so this is not going to be week, one week, it's probably going to be a month to six weeks, so it's going to take a lot longer, which means that it's more vulnerable to injury. So we've got to ensure that that wound isn't disrupted from mechanical trauma because that will just reopen it or pull it apart. Then we move into the scar tissue and remodeling phase. And so this is where the fibroblasts take over and they change from collagen three into collagen one, which we did see over here. So that is to stabilize the area to give it more strength, but it will also have a type of collagen which has got um, muscle-like fibers to it and that will kind of pull the wound edges together. And that's kind of a myoepithelium which pulls it closer together to retract the edges. And so even after six weeks, the wound size has probably only decreased by 10%. So you can see in this case, this is gonna be a lot more protracted, a lot more drawn out, take a lot longer to happen. So the outcome of the second intention wound is more gonna have more scarring involved compared to first intention, which is more regenerative. 
Finally, we'll move across to factors that decrease the wound healing process. So what factors may be present in your patient that will slow this process happening? And this is important for you as clinicians to ensure that these factors aren't in place because these would slow the healing in your patients. Now, what I've done here is I've got an acronym which will help you remember the most important factors. The, sorry, I should say mnemonic. Uh, the mnemonic is I don't need giant medical problems for life. So the way the mnemonic works is the start of each of these words is one of the factors. So let me write them out. You can copy me if you have paper with you. So we put I, D, N, G, M, P, F, L. So now you've got them written there. Let's fill it out and make sense of what the factors are. The first one is infections. So the first thing you want to ensure is the wound is not infected. So this could be commonly with bacteria. If the wound has bacteria or any other microorganism in it, this will be disrupting the healing process, particularly exaggerating the inflammatory response because there's going to be more toxins from the bacteria, more injury, more necrotic tissue, this is going to take a lot longer. So we want to ensure that there's no infectious or microorganisms in the wound. Next is diabetes. Diabetes will significantly slow down the healing process for many reasons. It's going to be, create poorer blood flow to the area. It's going to enhance or hamper um, collagen production, the immune system and the way that that works the metabolic state of the tissue. So diabetes is very profound in its ability for wound healing. N is nutrition, specifically poor nutrition. So th things like proteins, vitamin C, both of those are very important for collagen production. Zinc plays an important role with immune cells. Iron helps for increased delivery of oxygen, which is important for that healing process. G, glucocorticoids, glucocorticoids. These are anti-inflammatory um, steroids or steroids used for inhibiting the immune system, which will be done from other reasons, but glucocorticoids will decrease collagen production. It will re reduce the amount of cytokines. That's the way that the cells communicate with each other, which improves this process. Um, growth factors, the number of immune cells, so that it's gonna be quite profound. M, mechanical. So you want to ensure that the wound isn't being pulled apart. There's no mechanical forces or torsion forces put through it, which is likely to pull the edges apart. So we've got to ensure that the wound, the, where, the, where in the body it is, isn't being moved. P is poor perfusion, poor perfusion. So this is blood flow. We want to ensure that the blood flow to the area is as heightened as it can be. So encouraging blood flow is important. F, foreign body. So this would be anything that's left over in the wound. This could be bone fragments, bits of metal, bits of glass, bits of wood, lots of tissue. So this is going to play a role in exaggerating the inflammatory process, slowing down the wound healing. And then finally, L, the location. So certain locations in the body will decrease the speed. So let's say your feet compared to your face or scalp is gonna be a lot slower to recover just because of you know, factors like blood flow. Also, if the injury is in certain cavities like the pleural cavity, the peritoneal cavity, synovial cavities, this is gonna produce more exudate which is gonna slow the process down. So there we have it, we've covered everything you need to in tissue repair. We've seen when tissue is injured, it generally takes two pathways. Hopefully we go through the regenerative pathway, but if the injury extent is such, or the type of tissue is say like permanent, scarring is more likely. When we look at the skin, we've got a combination of first or second intention wound healing. That depends on the extent of injury and inflammation and the type of injury. And then finally, we can see here common factors that would slow down wound healing. So as clinicians, we need to ensure that these things are being addressed. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.